Welcome to Lesson 1, The Speech Writing Process. I'm Jennifer Furlong, Communication and Public Speaking Instructor. In this lesson, we will look at the steps you can take to begin writing an effective presentation while also saving yourself valuable time. In all the years I've been teaching, one thing I've noticed is students tend to start at the wrong place when tackling a writing assignment. Whether they're working on a research paper or a speech, students tend to want to dive right in and begin by writing the introduction. But here's the question. How can you write an introduction if you don't really even know what the paper is about? By starting in the wrong spot, you're wasting very valuable time. So follow this method I'm outlining today to help yourself save time and write an effective and focused speech. This just might even help you with your next research paper assignment. So let's go. Like I said in the beginning of this lesson, don't begin with the introduction. First, you need to make some decisions about the speech itself before you even think about sitting down and writing the first word. For example, have you narrowed the topic down so that it's manageable in the time frame of the speech? For example, let's take the topic, the Civil War. It's way too broad for a five to seven minute speech. There's absolutely no way you could cover all there is to know about the Civil War in that small time frame. It's impossible. So you need to narrow down your topic to something more manageable. For example, perhaps a famous soldier or a specific regiment that fought in the Civil War or perhaps weapons used in the Civil War, the uniforms, the music, a specific battle. I could go on and on, but I hope you get the picture. Next, you need to figure out the general purpose of your speech. You have to ask yourself, are you informing the audience? That means your primary goal is to act as a teacher and give the audience an objective lesson about the topic. Or are you trying to persuade the audience? That means your primary goal is to influence the audience in some way. You want to influence their opinions or thoughts or even their behavior. The general purpose is an important distinction to make because this will influence the tone of your writing. From the research you gather, to the language you use, to even the delivery of the speech itself. After you've decided on the general purpose, is it going to be to inform or to persuade? The next step is to write out what is called a specific purpose statement. This is a statement that makes it clear what the overall goal of your speech is. What do you want the audience to learn? Um, what do you want them to know by the end of the speech? What do you want the audience to do or to believe? By keeping the end in mind, you'll be able to write a more focused speech. And I'll show you some examples of specific purpose statements in the next slide. Remember, it's important to keep the end goal in mind when writing your specific purpose statement. It'll make it clear exactly what you hope to accomplish by the end of the speech while making the audience your primary consideration. You know, for example, if my specific purpose is to inform my audience about the scientific uses of hot air balloons, this will help me focus on that specific narrow topic while I do my research and organize the main points of my speech. I'm less likely to get distracted by information regarding the history of hot air balloons or how they're used for recreation. The next example is the same. If my specific purpose is to persuade my audience to donate blood, I know I need to focus my attention on providing the reasons why blood donation is currently in need and how my audience can help fulfill that need. The last slide provided some examples of how to write a specific purpose statement. Notice we still haven't gotten to the part where we're sitting down to begin the research and the writing process. Um, we're still not done thinking things through. Remember, you need to spend the time up front focusing on these important preliminary questions and answers. Um, if you do that, you will definitely save yourself lots of time later on. So the next step is to figure out exactly what the speech is about. And this is called the central idea. A central idea is the same thing as a thesis statement. It's important to create a clear central idea because you're going to eventually plug the central idea into the introduction of the speech. It's how you reveal the topic to the audience. And this is how they understand what the speech is about. 
The next slide provides some examples of central ideas. Remember, the central idea is the same thing as a thesis statement. You're revealing the topic to the audience. But here's a key difference between speech writing and writing a research paper. The central idea should be a one sentence summary that encapsulates the speech. In other words, you should be able to explain what your speech is about in one sentence. If your topic is so complicated that you can't explain the central idea in one sentence, then you need to go back to the beginning and narrow your focus even further. It's critical you remember that you're writing for listeners and not readers. Listeners don't have the luxury of flipping back the pages or rereading the previous paragraphs to try to understand the material. You get one shot to get them to understand your speech. The examples on this slide show how effective a one sentence summary is for a listener. For example, nanorobots are being developed for use in medicine, weaponry, and daily life. This makes it clear what the audience is going to learn in this speech. You can even easily tell what the main points are going to be in the body of the speech. Main point one, medicine. Main point two, weaponry. Main point three, daily life. In the next example, South Africa has many attractions for vacationers, including beautiful scenery, exotic wildlife, and bustling cities. This example shows how an effectively written central idea um, is clear to the listener and, and it tells them exactly what the speech is about. And as a writer, it helps you go into the writing portion of the speech uh, by helping you figure out exactly what your main points are going to be. So again, don't start with the introduction. Now that you have a clearly written central idea, you can go directly to writing the body of the speech. Uh, your main points are already clear in the central idea. Now you just need the research to explain each point. And that'll be explained in further detail in the next lesson on organizing the main points of the body of the speech. So that's it for lesson one on the speech writing process, focusing on the preliminary part of the process. These are the steps you should take before sitting down and writing the speech. I guarantee this will save you a lot of time down the road. Thank you for listening. I hope you find the lessons helpful. Please feel free to visit my website at www.communication247.com. Um, also, if you have any comments or questions or you would like to see a lesson on a specific communication topic, feel free to shoot me an email at speechteach912 at gmail.com. You know, uh, a special reminder for current students, if you are a current student of mine, remember you need to contact me via your school email and send it to my school email. You know, save us both a lot of headache. And uh, also a final note, lessons are based on the art of public speaking. This is the textbook I use to teach my public speaking classes. We're currently using the 12th edition written by Dr. Stephen Lucas. Thank you. See you next time.